You call your beloved cat to have his dinner. Sir Scratchy. Suddenly, you hear loud stomping. The dishes on the dinner table clink with every thump. A painting's fallen off the wall. Is it an earthquake? No, that's a cat the size of a pony walking into the dining room. It needs ten times as much food as the average cat. And it purrs like a tractor. No, Scratchy, stop rolling. You'll turn over the cupboard. Well, this is one possible scenario for the evolution of animals in the future. Climate, water, oxygen in the air, and even gravity are factors that influence the course of evolution. For example, scientists predict that some bird species will gradually lose their warm feathers. In the future, they will basically look like sphinx cats with beaks and wings. The same thing might happen to our pets. Gradually, their fur will become shorter until they're completely bald. Urban pests like pigeons and rats will become even bigger, the size of a cat. A few million years ago, rats were barely the size of your little finger. That's because they hid in small burrows and had to be nearly invisible to large predators. Now, they live in comfortable cellars that humans have built. They can create cozy nests there. And the large amount of food and though they feel quite comfortable and continue to grow in size. Even more, rats have already developed oily fur so that dirty or toxic water can run off them without harming the rodents themselves. Plant-eating mammals, on the other hand, might have it worse. Their food will gradually diminish. With time, there will be fewer forests and greenery on the planet, and some plants will disappear altogether. Eventually, animals like deer, elephants, giraffes, and others will get smaller and smaller because of the lack of food. In addition to shrinking, mammals will have smaller eyes so they don't lose water from their bodies, and their ears will become larger to lose heat through them. Their tails will grow longer to swat away insects. As land mammals become smaller, birds will increase in size. That's because they'll be able to include shrinking animals in their diet. And the muscles of birds will become much stronger because they'll have to fly long distances in search of food. Animals in hot and dry places are more likely to learn how to get water from the air. To do so, they'll need long sails or skin flaps. Early in the morning, when the air is coolest, moisture will accumulate on these new body parts, and some lizards will evolve their collars to a much larger size. Then they'll be able to collect more rainwater. As for the marine world, we can already see some fish jumping out of the water to catch insects. In the course of evolution, fish fins may become longer and stronger so that they can leap further. And gradually, those fins will turn into wings to make them truly flying fish. Perhaps in the future, these fish will hunt small birds. To do that, they'll learn to hold their breath for longer and fly much higher. But the big fish and marine mammals will have a hard time. The ocean will heat up, and some species will begin to disappear. The largest inhabitant of the aquatic world, the blue whale, which is the size of two school buses, will shrink in size because there will be less food for it in the ocean. But the population of lizards and reptiles will thrive. They're good at absorbing heat. And with climate change, there will be more insects on our planet, which means more food for lizards. They'll start to increase in size. But now, they'll have to defend themselves against big birds. Their legs will become longer and stronger, so they'll be able to run a lot faster and not get eaten by a bird. And the insects? Well, they'll just explode. Insects will probably live in huge swarms and fly around looking for food. And they'll be angry and hungry because their usual source of food, mammals, will have either ceased to exist or shrunk in size. Humans will change too. Scientists predict that between 1,000 and 1 million years from now, we will completely lose our hair. Our limbs will become thinner and longer and will be about seven feet tall. Our feet will most likely lose their toes because they're no longer needed to keep our balance. Our head and brain will become more like a balloon, and our lifespan will be more than 100 years. Because humans are at the top of the food chain and don't take part in natural selection, we'll gradually become similar to each other. In tens of millions of years, all humans will probably look the same. Plus, we're developing genetic engineering technology. 
luminous rabbits, incredibly sized cows, web-weaving goats, super muscular pigs, and more. But we're more interested in how animals will evolve on their own. So, fast forward ahead in time. Humans have long lived on other planets and in other galaxies. Earth has long since become home to animals and plants. The only traces of humans here are giant cities made of metal and concrete that are buried deep underground. And up there, incredible creatures like the Necropteryx live. It's something between an ostrich and a vulture the size of an adult human. Its long and powerful beak is its main tool for protection against predators and for eating. Their strong legs with long claws make them excellent runners. This creature can walk dozens of miles in a day. Necropteryx needs warm fur or feathers. Without humans and the greenhouse effect, the temperature on Earth has dropped. But with a warm jacket, they'll be able to survive even a new ice age. And like ostriches, they reproduce by laying eggs. This is a parish shrew. It's like a common shrew a couple of inches long. But it has an unusual feature, a parachute on its tail. While little, they live in their parents' nests. But when they leave them, they launch themselves into the air and then open a parachute made of thin fur. The warm currents of air rise up and carry them. They can spend up to 24 hours in the air. Then they'll nest elsewhere and their babies will leave their home the same way. The waka. Waka waka. This animal looks like a striped giraffe with only two legs. It'll be one of the fastest creatures on our planet. No predator can beat it in a race. Plus, their eyes are perched high on their head. And with its long neck, the waka can see a threat even when sitting in tall grass. Terabytes are descendants of termites that will appear on Earth in 200 million years. If they see a threat, they'll spew a stream of chemicals, something like acid, from their huge head. Even the biggest predators will be afraid to approach them. Reed stilts are about three and a half feet tall and weigh almost as much as an adult human. Thanks to its striped coloring, a reed stilt is almost invisible in the reeds. It walks on its thin legs through marshy terrain and feeds on small fish. Its long neck and sharp teeth allow it to dash into the water, almost cobra-like. It catches fish and swallows them almost whole. But all of these predictions are very speculative. There are billions of factors that influence the course of evolution. The course of evolution could go the other way at any time. For example, an asteroid hits the Earth, causing a mass extinction and changing our planet's climate. A small percentage of surviving organisms begin to adapt to the new conditions. In a few million years, we'll have animals that none of us could have even imagined. And they're off. In the ultimate test of speed versus endurance, the cheetah immediately takes the lead. Reaching highway speeds in only three seconds, it's the fastest animal on this planet. But just after 20 seconds, covering a distance of seven football fields in that time, the cheetah can't keep going. And the pronghorn takes the lead. The speediest animals in North America, they leave their natural enemies, coyotes and bobcats, in the dust. Now, that's what I call fast food. But it's slowing down as well. At a lower speed, they can keep it up for miles. Close behind, look out, it's a blue wildebeest. Max speed aside, these animals travel over vast distances, trekking more than 1,000 miles during their yearly migrations. It would take you 20 hours to drive that. Up next, the king of the jungle himself. Like the cheetah, lions are built for short bursts of speed. They hunt by sprinting to their prey and pouncing on it with leaps of up to 36 feet, almost as long as a semi. More than a few seconds, though, and their muscles tire out. Down they go, one after the other. Cats, rabbits, bears, oh my. Nearly all the sprinters are tuckering out in under a minute. Now we find out who can endure the longest. The fastest two-legged animal and the largest bird on the planet can compete well enough with the sprinters. The tendons in an ostrich's legs are like springs, propelling the animal forward without expending too much energy. But after 45 minutes with its speed continuously falling, the ostrich is finally calling it quits. And there goes the pronghorn along with it. 
Fun fact, it gets its name from that unique split on each horn, like prongs in a fork. It's the only animal that sheds its horns each year. Usually only antlers fall off yearly. At the one hour mark, the camel taps out. It can easily transport large loads over 25 miles a day, but not while running. For windy days in the sand, camels have three eyelids protected by two rows of long, thick lashes. They can also close their nostrils completely. Boy, that would be handy. The sled dogs are still going strong. They have plenty of energy to keep up the stamina. Sled dogs eat five times more calories than your typical domestic pooch, taking in up to 10,000 a day. But uh-oh, at one hour and 20 minutes, the fluffy canines are done. The zebras are still hanging in there. As long as they can avoid a lion's quick pounce, they can easily outrun their predators thanks to their stamina. In fact, the lion doesn't get the zebra about 80% of the time. Their equine cousins keep galloping at a steady 10 miles per hour, even though horses can do more than five times that. A racehorse is built and bred to endure as its spleen pumps out more red blood cells to keep those muscles oxygenated. But at the two and a half hour mark, the horse is out of the race. And with that, the human takes the lead. Blown in the dust at the start of the race, the fastest our species has ever done is 27.8 miles per hour. And that was for a fraction of a second by Olympic sprinter Usain Bolt, not your average Joe. Speed is for the animal kingdom. Humans were built for long distance running and we top them all. The best we've got in that department is a man named Dean Karnazes, who jogged 350 miles across Northern California without stopping for 80 hours and 44 minutes. That's over three days of non-stop running. Really? He didn't even stop for... wow. Our species evolved for endurance running. We have a body covered, not in fur, but two to five million sweat glands. We're aerodynamic and can cool off more efficiently than animals that pant instead of sweat. Our large, strong glute muscles keep us upright. This minimizes our center of gravity and the surface area being hit by the sun. We save energy, maintain balance, and don't get too overheated, unlike the prey our early ancestors would hunt for. It took persistence, not speed. But any average Joe who's ever tried to run after the bus will know humans need to train to run super long distances. And the wear and tear on our muscles and joints is no joke. Regular marathon runners need weeks, even months, of prep before and rest after a competition. The racers have slowed down to a walking pace, and now the animal kingdom can finally impress with its endurance. The arctic lemming spends most of its day trotting around looking for grub. The tiny three-ounce creature travels 10 miles a day. That's like you walking the distance of 40 Grand Canyons in 24 hours. A polar bear usually covers 20 miles a day, but some have been tracked traveling 50 or even hundreds of miles. Polar bears are actually considered marine mammals since they spend their lives on the sea ice and depend on the ocean for food. Packs of wolves travel up to 30 miles a day in search of food. Loners looking for a new pack or a mate can travel much further, up to 500 miles. That'd be like going up and down Mount Everest 50 times. And why would you want to do that? During their yearly migrations, caribou can cover over 3,000 miles, more than the distance from San Francisco to New York. The eye color of Arctic caribou changes from gold to blue in the winter. It makes their vision more light sensitive during these months of little sunlight. But what's this? Up in the sky, it's the endurance flyers. Grab your binoculars and have a look at that ruby-throated hummingbird. Weighing not much more than a penny, some of them cross the Gulf of Mexico, a distance of 500 miles in about 22 hours of nonstop flight. Not bad for the smallest bird on our planet. Whoa, watch out, little guy. It's a peregrine falcon zooming by at 125 miles per hour. These birds can travel up to 800 miles a day and reach speeds of close to 190 miles an hour when diving. It's the fastest endurance flight among birds and technically the fastest animal on Earth. Ooh, a looming shadow covers the peregrine falcon from above. Here comes the biggest flying bird in the world. 
With its mighty 11-foot wingspan, the wandering albatross can travel 10,000 miles, almost halfway around the world in a single journey. They spend most of their time in flight, coming to land only when it's time to breathe. Ah, here we have a globe-trotting dragonfly that recently dethroned the monarch butterfly for the number one spot among massive insect migrations. Monarchs make an annual 3,000-mile trip from Canada to Mexico, but the globe skimmer dragonfly crosses oceans and flies up to 11,000 miles. If you're looking to set a world record for the longest walk in the world, you'd need to start on the most southern tip of Africa and trek to the furthest northeastern tip of Russia. It's 14,000 miles, more than half the circumference of the Earth. The Arctic Turn covers about 18,500 miles. That's three-quarters of the Earth's circumference in three week-long flights. If you tried to hike that, it would take you four years to complete such a trip. Still, nothing compared to the bird that can fly non-stop for 200 days in a row. Some swifts can be airborne for 10 months at a time, which means they cover the distance to the moon and back several times in their life. Like many migratory birds escaping winter, they eat and sleep while flying. Switching to X-ray mode and you'll see these birds switch off half their brain for rest, while the other half keeps the flight going. Now, don't be so impressed, humans can do that too. Well, sort of. It's why you sleep so lightly in unfamiliar places. Half your brain is on alert and not entirely sleeping. Humpback whales swim over 6,000 miles every year during the migration season. They hold the record for the longest migration among marine creatures. Fun fact, each humpback's whale tail is as unique to it as a fingerprint. There's even a picture catalog of all the known ones. Yet many sharks would sit back and laugh at all of them, if sharks could laugh. Species like great whites and makos, contemporary relatives of the megalodon, by the way, don't stop swimming their entire lives. If they stop, they won't be able to breathe. Continuous movement allows water to flow through their gills, and that's how they get oxygen. But most of their muscles don't need oxygen to function. That's their white muscle tissue. It's for long-distance endurance swimming. Red muscle tissue, which needs oxygen from the blood, is only used during short bursts of speed. Ah yes, driving through the countryside. Windows down, music, nice and loud. Just another road trip. You see a bunch of cows out the window. One of them really stands out. Literally. The other cows look like black and white hamsters. The Guinness World Record for tallest cow ever goes to this cow named Blossom. This big grass guzzler was six foot four. <laughs> Somebody better buy that cow some basketball shoes. The average cow's only four foot five. Blossom must have felt like a giant. When you're that tall, you don't just hang around in a field eating grass. Blossom was the official greeter for a local resort. Big Jake. And believe me, big is an understatement. This guy got famous for being the world's tallest horse. Checking in at a whopping 6 foot 11, we're gonna need a whole lot of basketball shoes. What a stud, which actually pretty much just means male horse, so... Now what about this little cutie? The world's shortest female horse. Her name is Thumbelina. What a perfect name. And she's only about 1 foot 5. That didn't stop her from going viral, though. Oh, and the shortest male horse is called Bomble. It means bubble in Polish. He's only two feet tall, but his heart is larger than life. So, so cute and shorter than a greyhound. Now, I'm a full-out dog person. Well, regular-sized dog person. Zeus, a Great Dane, was officially the world's tallest dog. Being three foot eight on all fours made you think you were looking at a small horse. Imagine that face waking you up in the morning. And what about taking him out for a walk? You'd have needed a pretty strong leash. According to his owners, he was a gentle giant and was usually laid back, luckily. And Zeus had a really important job. He was a certified therapy dog, spreading his love and joy to all in need. Imagine a dog like that. You wouldn't need to put out a water bowl every day. He could just drink straight out of the tap. Hugging would be on a whole different level, too. How much do you think that guy ate? 
Would he have even fit on your bed? So many questions. Now what if you're a cat person? You'd better prepare yourself. Ha! Get it? Anyway, this cool cat over here has been called the world's longest domesticated cat. His name's Baravel, which means clown, and he comes from a small town in Italy. He's a gentle giant too, which is good because he's longer than a baseball bat. When they see a photo, people usually think he's been photoshopped. He enjoys basking in the sun by the window, staring out into the backyard. Hunting mice must feel like chasing ants to him. The previous title holders were called Ludo and Stewie, the same breed as Baravel. That's a lot of cat fur on my mom's new sofa. Sheesh. Hopping up next is a rabbit named Darius. His long ears and cute button nose aren't why he's special. A regular rabbit's about 14 inches, but Darius here? Just over 50. That's basically a rabbit dog. Darius grew up on a farm in England, and living out in an open field gave him a super chill personality. Feeding him must be tough, though. Darius must be a carrot-eating machine. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. Enough of the cute stuff. Time for some more exotic animals. Maybe even mythical ones. Myths are just how people explain crazy things. Like the legend of the white-lipped man. That turned out to be just me eating cheesecake. Quick and shifty under the water, able to bring down an entire ship, the Kraken was famous for disappearing ships. That's what the legends say. Probably just a sailor's tale told to scare the new recruits. But researchers may have found its baby brother. The largest ever recorded squid was almost 60 feet long, but the researchers forgot to video it. Huh, no! The largest squid ever caught on camera was about 25 feet. That's like an RV. Scientists think there might be larger ones out there, but they're kind of camera shy. The great white shark, frightening ocean animals left and right. She's called the queen of the ocean. She's not one of those kind and gentle queens, oh no. Scientists were able to tag her to study her more. This queen weighs about 3,500 pounds. That's like six motorbikes or 14,000 hot dogs. She was caught in the waters off Nova Scotia by a team of terrified researchers. Good thing sharks only chill in the ocean. Unless, what about an episode of Shark Ninja Warriors? That was the biggest, now the longest. Good guess, but nope, definitely not a snake. But it is as long as half a football field. This animal was discovered in the deep waters off Australia. They found it there, glowing. And get this, scientists say it isn't even a single creature. It just acts like one. It's actually a whole colony, cloning and multiplying until it gets even bigger. Its technical name, um... This next animal can move on land and water. Don't be fooled by its short scrawny legs. A crocodile can run as fast as a human on land. So if you're running a lap against these sprinters, try to climb up a tree as high as you can. Crocs can't climb trees but you'd better believe they'll be waiting for you when you get down. They're also the heaviest reptiles in the world. An adult can weigh about the same as two small cars. The largest one in captivity was a saltwater croc in the Philippines. Lolong was his name, and he was 20 feet long. That's like two ping pong tables end to end with a whole bunch of teeth. Slithering up next, another reptile, a beast of a serpent from Malaysia. Some workers were on break at a construction site on a hot day. They noticed something. Was it a large pipe? Well, this time it was a snake. They pulled out the longest python ever captured. It took more than five men to carry it out of the construction site without harming it or themselves. The beast was 26 feet long and weighed around 550 pounds. That's only a bit shorter than a light post. The previous record for the longest snake in captivity was the famous Medusa, also a python. That kind of snake can eat its whole weight for lunch. That's like me eating 280 burgers. I definitely don't want fries with that. Back to the water. Behold, the heaviest blue catfish ever caught. 
the Andersons bagged this guy in Virginia back in 2011, and they've been bragging about it ever since. Weighing in at a whopping 143 pounds, that's like fishing a washing machine out of the lake while standing on a small boat. That's why it took both father and son to drag it on deck. Honorable mention goes to the largest living cat in the world. No, it's not a lion or a tiger, but a little bit of both. It's a liger. Ligers don't exist out in nature, since lions and tigers live in totally different parts of the world. Than wildlife parks, it's been done. Hercules holds this particular record. At over 900 pounds, he's the biggest carnivore mammal in the whole world. He's got his length from his mom, a tiger, and his weight from his dad, a lion called Arthur. Want to know what it's called when the mom is a lion and the dad's a tiger? A tigan. They're way less common than ligers, but they're just as bizarre. That sort of sounds like the ancient Greek mythical creature, the chimera. It was part lion, part goat, part snake, and some stories say it even had bat wings. Oh, and it breathed fire too. You'd need to bring in a whole bunch of Spartan firefighters to take care of that thing. But it probably hosts a sweet barbecue party. So what about us humans? The award goes to Robert Wadlow from Illinois. He was a staggering eight foot eleven inches, and he could pick up his dad when he was just nine years old. Just let that sink in for a while. He ate over eight thousand calories a day, and his shoe size was thirty seven double A. The sight of its fin in the water nearly stops your heart. It's the reason you feel so uneasy going for a swim at the beach. That massive, razor-toothed hunter that's made its name known, the Great White Shark. So, if the ultimate terror of the sea is leaving the area, it must be for a good reason. But what could possibly scare the Great White away? A giant Lovecraftian monster that makes even Megalodon look tiny? Nah, not even close. Nothing can clear a portion of the ocean as quickly as orcas can. When their powerful pods come looking for food like seals and squids, even the biggest, scariest sharks leave the area without looking back. It's not known if these whales specifically target great whites, or they're just keeping the competition out of the area. But what marine experts do know is that sharks flee, sometimes not even coming back until the following year. Yeah, makes sense. Orcas are much larger than great whites in size. They have plenty of teeth, and they'll use them to satisfy their merciless desire for meat. Orcas are also highly intelligent and will work as a team to get what they want. Whether that's catching a school of fish, getting seals off the ice, or even chasing down humpback whales. So, if the great white shark itself is scared of the mighty orca, should you be? Well, me personally, I keep my distance from any wild animal. But maybe this will help you sleep better at night. Orcas are known to be picky eaters. Good news for you, human isn't on the menu. They aren't likely to change their diet just because you're in the water today. Oh, by the way, orcas aren't even whales. They're technically the largest species of dolphin. And sharks are also afraid of their relative, the bottlenose dolphin. Even a single bottlenose is too powerful for a shark, but they're tougher when they travel as a pod. Sharks are easily outmaneuvered by the highly agile marine mammals. They use that blunt snout like a battering ram. This basically annoys the shark so much that it just leaves the area. Now, if you think about other top hunters in the animal kingdom, wolves always come to mind. Packs can take over vast territories. And since they're at the top of the food chain, they get to pick and choose from a large menu with anything they please. They're highly intelligent, fast, and agile. But probably their biggest advantage? Numbers. If grizzlies or mountain lions try taking advantage of them, the numbers game always works in the wolf's favor, leading to the hunter becoming the hunted. Even without numbers, they dominate and terrify. It's too hard for any other animal to target a lone wolf, so even they are usually left alone. 
Imagine being able to pounce a wild boar in below-freezing temperatures while dressed in orange against a completely snow-covered white environment. Siberian tigers are clearly not playing around. Over 10 feet long and weighing up to 400 pounds, they're the largest of all wild cats. This kitty could easily jump right over your head while carrying double its body weight. The only animal that can really challenge this king of the forest is a large enough brown bear, and it'd be a close call. No wonder the Siberian tiger is the top of the food chain in its part of the globe. As for the top boss in the waters of South America, that would be the green anaconda. Not even jaguars and caiman are safe around the biggest snake in the world. The murky waters of riverbanks camouflage the giant snake perfectly. They go unnoticed, sitting there waiting for something to come have a drink. And then, whoosh, the snake strikes. It uses its sharp curved teeth and 15 feet of pure muscle to hold its lunch in place. Luckily for most animals, after eating their fill, anacondas can go weeks or even months without worrying about their next meal. But the world's biggest snake isn't the most dangerous. That title belongs to the black mamba. Lions, spotted hyenas, giraffes, and even elephants will avoid the mamba at all costs. They all know one bite can stop them very quickly. Growing up to 14 feet, it's the second longest venomous snake in the world after the king cobra. The African black mamba does hold the top spot as the world's fastest snake. It slithers along going 12 miles per hour. That's about where most treadmills max out. Not top dog, but worth a mention, is the green anaconda's neighbor, the electric eel. Very few animals are willing to take on such a highly charged creature. Electric eels have around 6,000 special cells that can produce up to 800 volts of electricity. That's more than six times the standard U.S. wall socket. That's enough to knock a horse off its feet and to power holiday lights. In 2019, a Tennessee aquarium hooked some tree lights up to their eel tank. Every time the eel shot the water, the trees lit up. Now, it's been said that the electric eel can recycle its volts in a process called revolting. Nah, I made that up. One more truthful eel fact to knock you off your feet. Electric eels are air breathers. They have to surface about every 10 minutes to fill their mouth with air. Yep, their single lung is in their mouth. Does the king of the jungle reign unchallenged? In books and movies, sure. In real life, eh, not so much. For one, their home is on the African plains, not the jungle. A whole assortment of contenders, like hyenas, leopards, and crocodiles, are always trying to take the king's crown. Even zebras and giraffes can stop the big cats with a quick kick if they're cornered. If we go by bite force, the African Nile crocodile has the biggest that humanity has ever measured. Its jaws are five times more powerful than that of a lion's. Now earlier, with the water critters, all you had to do was avoid the water. Good luck avoiding a lion! They can run 50 miles per hour, jump the length of a school bus, and climb trees. The lion's biggest challenger for the apex role is the African wild dog. These two are constantly going at it because they hunt for the same food in the same area. Where there's a big pride of lions, the dogs have no choice but to flee. But they've got one thing against the cats. Endurance. Lions might reach incredible speeds, but that's only in short bursts. It takes too much energy to carry 400-plus pounds of muscle over long distances while going as fast as you can. African wild dogs, though, have long, slender legs and big lungs for their body size. Meaning, they can run fast and keep it up for miles. That's how they hunt. Their lunch just gets tired of running. There's one animal brave enough to take on the king if the cat gets too curious. The hippo. They may seem cute and squishy. But hippos are one of the most dangerous animals on the planet. Based on statistics, you should fear them way more than great white sharks. And there's nothing squishy about them. Hippos are pure muscle and weigh as much as a car. Their pointy canine teeth can grow longer than your forearm. These guys aren't afraid of anything. 
Even lions and crocodiles prefer to keep their distance. Their name means water horse. And they do spend up to 16 hours a day submerged. Funny thing is, hippos can't really swim. If you see one swimming, it's actually pushing itself off the lake or river bottom. It can still be even the best Olympic swimmer speed, so watch out! Yep, move aside, Leo! Hippos are the true apex animal of Africa. But I wouldn't get close enough to give them the award. As for the ruler of the forest, make way for the grizzly bear. Weighing over half a ton, you'd be mistaken thinking these large fluff balls are slow and bumbling. Being able to maintain a speed of 25 miles per hour for long stretches is too easy for the behemoth brown bear. Uphill, downhill, and on every terrain, they're the off-road SUV of the animal world. Without having any natural enemies, this bear is at the top of its local food chain. Good thing they sleep for a third of the year. Just hope you don't run into a grizzly, um, ever. But especially right before it's about to go into hibernation. They spend the autumn months fattening up for winter. And they're even hungrier than usual. Now, being the largest bird of prey in North America, it's no wonder the golden eagle is found all over the continent in woodlands and mountain ranges. Their wingspan is nearly 8 feet. And they don't call it eagle vision for nothing these birds can spot a rabbit from 3 miles up in the air. It'd be like you seeing an ant while standing on top of a 10-story building. Golden eagles can also make quick dives from a great height. During these dives, they can reach speeds up to 200 miles per hour, as fast as a flying arrow. Hard to believe, but zebras have completely black skin under their striped coats. They need the markings to control their body temperature. This creates a flow of cool air that circulates across their bodies. They can also raise the hair on the black stripes to trap heat, while the white hair stays completely flat. So if zebras were completely white or black, they would need to find some other way to maintain their temperature. They'd need to find a new way to avoid predators as well. The black decorations also create a dazzle effect, which means that when the zebra is running, the stripes make it hard to understand what direction it's moving in. Pandas don't use their coats to control their body temperature. The black markings around their eyes are vital for surviving in the forest. They help them to recognize and communicate with other pandas. They're hunted by leopards, so the black fur on their faces and limbs make them less noticeable. They can blend into their surroundings when it's dark. And those big white patches help them hide during winter. Cheetahs have over 2,000 individual black spots all over their bodies. Each one has a unique pattern. They need those spots to stay camouflaged when stalking their prey. Cheetahs are born with these spots, so even when they're cubs, they can stay hidden and protected. Without the spots, well, it'd be much harder for them to both hunt and hide. Underneath, their skin is all one color and doesn't have any spots at all. Unlike cheetahs, tigers have their famous pattern on both their fur and their skin. They use their stripes to hide from their prey by blending into the high grass. Tiger colors are nothing like the color of grass, but here's the thing. Lots of animals in the wild are colorblind and can only distinguish between black, white, and shades of gray. Plenty of creatures have stripes, but bumblebees are some of the smallest ones. Their black and yellow stripes help protect them from predators. They're like a warning that, hey, eating a bee can lead to a very unpleasant sting. Bees can also be completely black and completely white, but they're not albinos. They can also have red, orange, and yellow stripes, and even blue, green, and purple ones. Try to find a mammal that's as colorful as a mandrill, and you'll fail for sure. They have red, pink, blue, and purple features on their faces and behinds. Their colors usually determine their social status. The brighter, the more important they are. The brightest mandrel is always the boss. These animals live in groups of up to 200. Hormones make them lose the hair on their, uh, sit-upons, so the bright colors are exposed even more. The colors also become brighter when the mandrel is excited. So yes, it's their other cheeks that blush. That's only the males, though. 
Females are brown-colored and have no bright patches at all. Grown-up baboons look really similar to mandrels, but their colors work in a different way. When they've just been born, they're completely pink, but their skin gets darker as they get older. A weird thing happens to the hair on their bodies. Newborn baboons have black fur, but it gets lighter and lighter as they grow up. Eventually, they become a light gray color. Now, it's hard to say why this happens, but the gray color is probably to help them camouflage. Male jumping spiders are almost as colorful as mandrels. They might have red, blue, and yellow colors on their bodies. But the female jumping spiders aren't attracted by these colors. Instead, they use them as a signal that they're poisonous. They may look scary, but this kind of spider is actually really friendly. Jaguars have incredible and unique patterns. Each of their spots looks like a rose, which is why they're called rosettes. Though jaguars look a lot like leopards, it's pretty easy to spot the difference. (laughs) Jaguars are bigger than leopards, and so are their spots. Sometimes, though, a mutation occurs, and both these cats can turn completely black. These black ones are called black panthers. That's right, they're not actually a separate species. You look marvelous! Peacocks seem colorful, but their feathers are actually brown. The feathers of these funky-looking birds have a weird design that reflects light in a special way. This makes them look blue, emerald, and turquoise. Sometimes their colors change depending on what direction you look at them from. For peacocks, it's really important to show off the eye patterns on their tails to impress the other birds. Mm -hmm. Keeping up with the peacocks! They have around 200 big feathers in their tails, and 170 of those have eyes. Polar bears have completely black skin underneath their white fur. Actually, even their fur isn't really white. The hair on their coats is hollow and almost transparent, which makes them completely invisible in the snow. But their black skin absorbs the heat from the sunshine. The trouble is, they need to keep their fur clean all the time. Otherwise, it doesn't keep them warm. Giraffes need the patches on their fur to camouflage themselves. No two giraffes have the same pattern. It's unique, just like our fingerprints. But their patterns are actually more complicated than they seem. They have a complex system of blood vessels under the patches. They help the heat circulate, because that's where the blood is really close to the surface. Their skin itself doesn't have any traces of these special patches, though. Turtles all have different patterns, too. Their patterns are made up of squares called scoots. Excuse me, got a scoot. Sometimes, these can be brightly colored to attract other turtles. Their shell patterns are actually affected by how warm or cold they were before they were born. If the temperature is pretty low, the turtles end up with a thicker and larger pattern. If the temperature is higher, the turtles have smaller squares when they hatch. Brightly colored wings are actually really useful to butterflies. They're used for warning others, as camouflage, and to attract other butterflies. The patterns differ a lot on the surface and on the back of the wings. One or two days before the larvae become adult butterflies, they start developing colors. It's the scales on the butterfly's wings that determine exactly what color it'll be. The color of the scales usually comes from chemical pigments. But sometimes, their amazing colors are just a reflection of the light. Another super colorful animal is the red-eyed tree frog. When they're still little froglets, their bodies are a straightforward brown color. But when they grow up, their bodies turn green, and they have yellow and blue stripes on their sides. Their feet can be orange or even red, just like their eyes, and there are spots of blue on the legs. These creatures end up looking like little rainbows in order to camouflage themselves. Also, when the frog runs away, predators can be confused by all the flashing colors. The map pufferfish is a true genius when it comes to camouflage. They don't have scales, but their skin looks exactly like coral, which helps protect them from predators. Their skin is white, but it's covered in black, brown, and green lines. But just in case something does try to make the puffer its next meal, they're also really toxic. Boa constrictors have beautiful patterns on them that are made up of different colored scales. Their scales are heat-sensitive, and so are their lips. Hey, kiss one and find out! 
This helps them locate potential prey. Their color is more important for camouflage, although you can sometimes find albino boas. The cows that give us the milk we drink and have that distinctive pattern are called Holstein Frisian cows. No one is really sure why they need those patterns. Some of them aren't black and white, though. They can also be red and white because of a recessive gene. But you'll never see two cows with an identical pattern. All of them are exclusive. So there. Poison dart frogs are seriously bright. Their color is a crazy mix of orange and red, almost neon, but they can also be turquoise. Some of them even have patches of gold along with black spots. These bright colors help solve two challenges at once. First, they let all the other animals know just how poisonous they are. This is a good idea, as you wouldn't want to eat one. Sometimes it's actually good to have a bad reputation. A single 1-inch long golden poison frog has enough poison to finish off 10 adults. Second, it helps the male frogs attract females, who prefer brighter frogs over paler ones. Apparently, the poison thing is not a deal-breaker with the ladies. The king of comedy in the wild is definitely the comedian. Oops, sorry, make that chameleon, the king of color. Some of them can change their hues completely. Others can only vary the shade of their skin. There's a really complicated process going on here with their changing colors. Their skin contains pigments, and underneath these are cells with special crystals. Chameleons can alter the space between those crystals, making the light reflect differently on their bodies. This changes their skin color. They do this to camouflage themselves, although some use it to regulate their body temperature. And yes, also to tell funny jokes. <laughs> wow, this guy has gained international fame for its uh, not-so-attractive looks. But it was an unfair competition. I'm talking about the one and only blobfish. This thing was once on display in an aquarium, looking like a gloopy, slimy, well, blob. But underwater in its natural habitat, it looks like any other normal fish. It's a deep-sea dweller living off the coast of Australia. The blobfish thrives at around 3,000 feet below the surface. At those depths, the pressure is 120 times higher than what you and I are used to. In fact, only robust submarines can go that deep. This droopy creature doesn't have a skeleton or much muscle. Instead, it has jelly-like flesh to combat the extreme underwater pressure. You also won't find a great white shark in any aquarium you go to. In the past, many have tried adding great whites along other sharks in their tanks, but it never worked out. They'd stop eating and even struggle to swim. Doesn't make for great business either. It's too costly to keep the great white because a large enough tank will need millions of gallons of water. These fish don't like staying in one area for long. They prefer open waters where they can swim vast distances. We haven't seen one in captivity since the 1970s. The Saola, better known as the Asian unicorn, was just discovered in 1992. It lives on the slopes of the Annamite Mountains between Laos and Vietnam. It looks like an antelope, but genetic tests show it's more closely related to cows. The Saola is one of the rarest large mammals in the world. Surveys estimate there are just 70 to 750 left in the wild. Yeah, that's a pretty big range. Experts can't get a more specific number because they're impossible to spot. Only two have been caught and studied. On to the unicorns of the sea, narwhals. There are more than 80,000 of these creatures, but they're still near threatened. They've got long, narrow tusks protruding from their heads. This unicorn-like tusk is actually a tooth that can grow up to 10 feet. They belong to the whale family, but unlike their relatives, they don't migrate. Narwhals spend their lives in the Arctic waters of Greenland, Canada, Norway, and Russia. They live up to 50 years in the wild, but they can't make it in captivity. So if you want to see one in real life, the zoo isn't the place to look. Unlike other creatures on the list, swallows are very common. You might recognize this pretty bird from those gorgeous blue feathers running from their head to tail. Even though they're one of the most widespread species, they're not suited for zoos. They eat on the fly, literally, and catch their food in the air, which is why they only feed on flying insects. They need to live in large aviary structures with plenty of flying room, 
And most zoos can't provide that. You'll find plenty of lowland gorillas in captivity. The same can't be said about mountain gorillas. These apes have longer hair, and they're more grayish than brown. There are only about 1,000 of them in the wild, making them an endangered species. Mountain gorillas usually spend a quarter of their day eating. Back in the 60s and 70s, there were many attempts to catch them and start a captive population. But it was impossible. They might not do well in enclosed environments because of their particular dietary needs. Without those, the gorilla's health declined noticeably. Another issue could have been stress. Now, there aren't any mountain gorillas in any facility. Diving back into the water, we have the giant squid, a behemoth that inspired lore of the kraken. This creature remains a mystery to scientists. Their inhospitable deep-sea environment has made them hard to study. The only research scientists could do was from rare specimens that washed up on the shore. In 2004, researchers in Japan snapped the first pick of a live giant squid. Two years later, they managed to bring one up to the surface. Because they live so deep in the sea, their eyes are the size of a beach ball. They can see things in the darkest places of the ocean where other creatures would struggle to see anything at all. To this day, the giant squid has never been caught or kept in captivity to be studied in full. Next, we've got the rarest large mammal on the planet, the Javan rhino. Less than 70 are left, and they all live in a national park on the island of Java, Indonesia. Of the five total rhino species, they're the most endangered one. Scientists aren't sure how long they live, but guess somewhere between 30 to 40 years. The area where they live is vulnerable to tsunamis, and they're also close to many active volcanoes. If any of them erupts, the Javan rhino could go extinct. Now, a creature you've probably never heard of is the Indri. The Madagascar native is a unique primate that relies on trees to move around and feed. They live 15 to 18 years in the wild, but in captivity, some barely made it one year. Probably because they don't do so well with stress and disturbance. Experts believe their diet is so specific that it can't be replicated in captivity. They also notice the animals don't reproduce when they're taken out of the wild. The pink fairy armadillo doesn't have wings or do magic, but it's still an adorable little animal with a pinkish shell that acts like a living radiator. It's the smallest of all armadillos, and it spends its entire life using its bulky front claws to burrow through the earth, mostly at night. It can hardly be spotted, let alone caught, and that's why scientists haven't been able to study this fellow very much. And you'll only find it in central Argentina. Even though rare bugs are popular in zoos, one you'll never see is the giraffe weevil. Why the name? It has an extraordinarily long neck that helps the bug build its nest. No ladder needed. They spend most of their time feeding on the leaves of a single tree species dubbed in their honor, the giraffe beetle tree. There's another insect species called the giraffe weevil in New Zealand, but funny enough, it's an entirely different species. Straight from the deepest part of the Earth comes the Mariana snailfish. It thrives at 26,000 feet below. It's almost as high as planes fly, only the opposite direction, of course. The pressure at such depths is so intense, it'd feel like an elephant is standing on your toe. Ow! Thus, it just couldn't make it in the shallower waters of an aquarium. Another deep-sea lover is the Dumbo octopus. It lives 13,000 feet below the surface. At those depths, it rarely feels threatened. So this little cutie doesn't have an ink sac like other octopuses, which use theirs for protection to get away from enemies. It belongs to the family of umbrella octopuses. You can see its arms are connected by a web of skin, giving it an umbrella-like appearance when swimming around. Not many people have seen a Dumbo octopus, but it isn't an endangered species. Nobody can go that deep to mess with this guy. Lastly, one of the most critical factors for deciding if an animal can survive in an aquarium is their size. When it comes to blue whales, unless an aquarium is the size of the ocean, that's a no-go. And an animal that big needs tons of food. No aquarium could ever afford it. It's an endangered species with less than 25,000 left. These marine mammals migrate over thousands of miles. 
To cover such vast distances, a blue whale can actually sleep while it's swimming. But it's never entirely unconscious. It lightly naps while cruising through the water. That's a big boy. You wake up with your head feeling heavy. Mmm, one, where's your comfy bed? And two, why were you just sleeping on the wet and dirty ground in the middle of nowhere? Wait, what's all this stuff around you? Are you in the jungle? There's a backpack nearby with essentials like water, cookies, candy bars, and a jacket. It's yours for sure, but still, hello, how on earth did you get here? Wait, jacket? It's insanely hot. You definitely won't be needing that. Seriously, what is this place? Giant leafy plants? Thick rainforest trees? Huh? Kinda looks like Jurassic. You jump in fear, look around, and run under one of those shady plants. Okay, not a great choice and definitely not the best time to recall that you're terrible at hide-and-seek. There's a huge weird-looking animal coming out of the bushes staring at you. Dinosaur! You scream, you shiver, you cover your eyes. Not exactly how you were expecting your morning to go. Wait a minute. Dinosaurs don't bark. You open your eyes. That thing definitely charged at you. But now it's just jumping around, wagging its long tail, barking, and sticking its tongue out. And it looks so familiar. It's a dog? You almost cry out in relief. That thing's weird. Dogosaurus? What else could it be? Big, gray, and hairy, but insanely familiar to a T-Rex. Its front legs are actually short little arms, and its long muzzle with sharp teeth is all over you. Well, Dogosaurus is covering you with dino slobber. Another hairy thing comes out of the bushes. White and fluffy, short front legs, long dark gray tail, ridiculously big ears. It's a dino rabbit! The two animals start chasing each other and goofing around. Um, is this for real? Dogosaurus gets bored and comes running up to you, starts rubbing its head on your arm. You pet it, while also wondering what to do next. What happens if this thing gets annoyed or hungry? I'm gonna call it Max. You grab a random stick and throw it as far as possible. Well, at least that's over. The dino dog's gone and questions start overloading your brain. What's that thing doing in the jungle? What else lives here? Are they all gonna be that friendly? It doesn't take long to find out. A horrifying sound fills your ears. You turn slowly this time. Another surprise! Just a few feet away, another huge beast is staring at you. Its eyes are the scariest part, wide open and pointed directly at you. You hold your breath. It could all be over in an instant. But after a moment, you let out a sigh of relief. It's only a zebra. Well, zebrasaurus. Bizarre. Black and white stripes over a muscular body, and wow, that head is long. Its tail looks like it means business, and its back is covered with bony plates. Zebrasaurus takes a step forward. Zebras, they just eat grass and stuff, right? Hope this thing does too. Let's see, three options. Run, lie still, or pet the giant zebrasaurus. Wham! A way more hairy beast jumps out of the bushes and the race is on. Was that a chuckle? A laugh? Wait, was that a hyena? Hyenasaurus? Hyenas have one of the strongest jaws and necks around. That plus dinosaur? Pretty serious combination. One option, run. That zebra seems to know what's up. You start running, fighting off huge leafy plants and tripping over the roots of tall jungle trees. You jump, duck, dodge, and finally get out of the jungle. A beach. Perfect! Now you've got time to think about what you just saw. What's the plan now? Ocean, palm, sun, and finally, some fresh sea air. You take a deep breath and close your eyes. Quiet as a feather, giant paws softly crushing the grass, the whoosh of an elegant tail. Huge, grayish, and strong, with insanely long claws hidden in her big soft paws. And the head, gross. You do a double take. Still gross. It looks like a bare skull with sharp teeth and warm yellow eyes. This animal's not interested in you at all. It crouches down, looks ready to pounce. Then the catasaurus lazily purrs and starts licking its fur. Well, at least it didn't think you looked like a mouse, a stick, a ball, a cardboard box. Cats like the weirdest things. Mm, no time! 
the beach is suddenly full of gigantic red crabs. There's hundreds of them lying around, resting their long, sharp claws. Since when do crabs have ten eyes and four huge claws? Crabosoraptors do. You cover your mouth, but the scream comes out anyways. You run back into the jungle, not the best idea. This time, you run and never look back. Your only goal is not to hear those rasping, clicking crabosoraptor claws anymore. Something's different, though. The jungle's changed. The jungle looks like it's morphing. No more vines, huge weird leaves. The air's cooler. The paths are a bit wider. Apparently, you're in a forest now. You come across a large open field with a big dreamy lake in the middle. Perfect selfie location, apart from all those dino things, and trees that can shapeshift, apparently. A piercing scream flies across the lake. Pretty easy to recognize this graceful animal, even if the color's a bit off. It's a gray swanodactyl, S-shaped neck and everything. But this swan's had a few upgrades installed. Razor-sharp beak, big strong claws, and eyes that look like they can spot a tasty meal from miles away. Well, you're not a fish, so you'll probably be alright. Apart from that, the lake is gorgeous. Water lilies everywhere, the size of tables. Humongous lilies, humongous, ribbit, ribbit. Great, frogosaurus, that's a thing now. A huge one jumps out of the water and lands like a ninja on a lily. It looks like a huge rock, covered with dark gray bumpy skin. There's no Prince Charming hiding in that thing, (laughs) no way. Phew, you hide behind a giant bush. That frog has an epic-sized tongue. Nasty. Not even that crazy tongue could save it from what was coming up behind it. The floating head of a giant crocodilosaurus wrapped erect something. It looks the same as a regular crocodile, only much bigger. Like it needed any help to make it scarier. Frogosaurus jumps back into the water and starts to swim away with its huge back legs. The chase is on, and pretty soon they both disappear under the surface. Sure hope that guy made it. You almost feel sorry for the poor frog, but there's no time to think. The ground starts to shake. That's never good. A couple of trees near you crash to the ground. It looks like an upside-down boat. What is that thing? Oh, Turtlesaurus. That guy needs to lay off the coffee and protein bars. Um? What's that buzzing? It's getting louder and louder. Two things. One, that sounds like a bee. Two, please let it just be normal size. But instead of a tiny flying insect, a human-sized bee rex lands on the giant turtle shell. It's got its legs like a power lifter, and its antennas look sharp. If it's only one, that's okay. Hopefully. Out of nowhere, you hear a horrifying shriek. Oh, please make it stop already. A giant shadow covers the ground, and you look up. Some sort of bird-like dinosaur. These things actually have an official name, but you have no idea what it is. You only see its reddish-blue feathers, a sharp beak full of sharper teeth, and what are those things coming out of its wings? The bird sees the B-Rex and swoops down to grab itself a midday snack. But B-Rex hides under the turtle shell. (laughs) Good thinking. Something tells me I wouldn't be that fast or clever if that happened to me. I'd probably just… and then it happens. Its dark, creepy eyes notice you from a distance. You take a small step back. So far, none of the other animals have noticed you. Crack! A twig snaps under your shoe, and suddenly dozens of eyes latch onto you. Curious, angry, hungry eyes. Back to option number one. Run! You're going as fast as you can, but everything seems hopeless. You've come to a huge cliff with a river way down at the bottom. You close your eyes and jump. Boom! Your whole body shakes. You open your eyes. You're awake. It was all just a bad dream, right? Right? And they're off. The Nile crocodile easily outswims the hippo. They're swimming upstream against a heavy current. But the croc's body is built for swimming through rough water. It weighs as much as two refrigerator freezers and is thought to be the heaviest reptile on Earth. It can swim up to 22 miles per hour. The hippo can't swim. Not really. It just walks on the bottom of the river and pushes off from any big rock it finds. It can close its nostrils whenever it wants to be able to glide a bit through the water 
but it's no match for the croc. The croc reaches the shore and starts running through a field. But better make way, the hippo's catching up. It's speeding across the flat terrain. Even though it's huge, the hippo can outsprint a human. The croc was miles ahead, but the hippo's faster on foot. The hippo breaks through the ribbon. It's all over! Beep, beep! Hey there, Roadrunner! What you running from? Wait, hold everything. That coyote is catching up fast. He's right on your tail. The greater Roadrunner can run up to 20 miles per hour, even faster when it's really hungry. Despite what you see in cartoons, a coyote is actually twice as fast as a Roadrunner. But the cartoon version is way funnier. In lane one, from the dense jungles of South America, the ever-slow sloth. And right underneath him, in lane two, we have a typical garden snail. And the race is on for the slowest animal on Earth. With the sloth's top speed clocking in at 0.2 miles per hour, it's no wonder they call it a giant moving pillow. Well, I call them that. The snail is off to a good start. It can cover a small neighborhood in about an hour. This boneless creature has only one foot, which is covered in protective slime. It's too blurry to see, but I think the sloth is still in the same spot. And now it's asleep. It'll probably be asleep through the whole race. A sloth can snooze it up for 15 hours a day. It's asleep for more than half of its life. And look, the snail got out of that sunny patch. Next up, a shady patch. Ooh, it's too close to call. We'll have to wait till the sloth wakes up to get back to this race. A grizzly bear can easily outrun a human. If you're at a picnic and you cook up something a little too yummy, better leave your lunch behind. The fastest a human can sprint is 28 miles per hour, set, of course, by Usain Bolt. So he'd probably be able to run away in time. If you're slower than him, which you are, then you're in trouble. In a one-on-one sprint between a human and a grizzly bear, you're going to be the bear's lunch every time. But out of all the bears, which one's the fastest? Polar bears, grizzly bears, brown bears, sun bears, and the cute cuddly panda bear. On your marks, get set, go! The tension is palpable. The grizzly and the brown bear are claw to claw. A brown bear can easily run as fast as a grizzly. The sun bear is the smallest bear in the race. It's about six feet long, or tall, or whatever. It just can't keep up. The polar bear got off to a great start, but it just doesn't have the speed of the grizzly or brown bear. Grizzly takes the lead. No, it's the brown bear. Now grizzly. Wait, where's panda? What's it doing? I don't think it knows it's a race, but isn't it cute? It just finished its third bamboo stick. A panda bear can eat up to 28 pounds of bamboo a day. That's like a lot. But it's off. It found its shortcut and is rolling down that hill. It zooms past the grizzly and the brown bear. It's all over. Panda wins. Sorry, bears. We all know that the panda isn't exactly fast. It's actually one of the slowest bears. Still, if you see a panda rolling down the hill in your direction, run. A Boeing 747 has a top speed of around 620 miles per hour. The fastest bird is the gray-headed albatross. It can fly up to 80 miles per hour and stay up there for 10 hours without landing. The peregrine falcon is faster, but only when it's diving straight down to grab some takeout. Watch out, pigeon! Wow! Big planes take a long time to get up in the air, but the albatross? It's up and off in a few seconds. It's in the lead! But a few minutes later, back to Slowmoville. The sloth's awake. That's good. But so far, it's only managed to lift its arm to reach that tree branch. The garden snail's still trying to get past that big rock. Sloths spend a lot of their time as motionless as possible, so that they don't become someone else's breakfast. Not great training for a race. But hold on! Player 3 has entered the race. It's the Galapagos tortoise. Its powerful front legs carry this tank of an animal. It's a whopping four times faster than a garden snail. This just got interesting. We got ourselves the race that'll last a century. The tortoise is running and dodging every obstacle. Nothing can stop it. Hey, no cheating, sloth. Don't be dropping tree branches from up there. Deep underground, a mole's busy burrowing around. A mole can eat as many earthworms as his own body weight and can dig around 15 feet per hour. The American badger is the fastest digging animal in the world. 
and is surprisingly fast on land. It can almost match the speed of a human on a good day. Head-to-head, the American Badger wins the tunnel race pretty easily. Too bad the mole can't see where it's going. Moles aren't really blind. They just have terrible eyesight, and they're colorblind. And they can't wear glasses down there. Ah, the proud cheetah. It's sprinting across the savanna at warp speed. I've been the fastest land mammal for millions of years. I got this. The fastest cheetah on record was a sprinter named Sarah. When she was 11, she ran the 100 meters in under 6 seconds. A cheetah can run up to 80 miles per hour if it sees something tasty. Sarah was raised in an American zoo and was one of the first cheetahs to have a puppy buddy when she was growing up. Alexa and Sarah, friends forever. But soaring above Sarah is a humble little bat. And that bat is making Sarah look slow. The Brazilian free-tailed bat can hit 100 miles per hour. It's the fastest mammal on the planet. Now, time for some shrinking. First of the blocks is the Australian tiger beetle. It charges forward at 6 miles per hour. That may not seem like much, but relative to its size, it's lightning fast. That's like a human running alongside a high-speed train. Running in the inside lane is the Saharan silver ant. Ants are team players and are strongest when they're working together. But even one ant can be amazingly strong. An ant can lift hundreds of times its own weight and can sprint like there's no tomorrow. Hussein Bull can hit four strides per second. This silver ant does 50. Scientists even discovered that these little ants like to gallop once they reach their top speed. Our last contender, the fastest animal on Earth. It's none other than this tiny mite. It's only the size of a sesame seed. If we go by body lengths per second, this microscopic animal outruns everything else on the planet. It's believed to run almost twice as fast as the tiger beetle. And if it were human size, it would run faster than the speed of sound. Um, let's get back to the crawlers. They finish yet? The tortoise is in the lead. The snail finally got past that large rock, and the sloth is on its way to branch number two. The tortoise is three feet away from the finish line. Wow, I just can't take much more of this excitement. But I think I have time for a latte. Uh Uh-oh, villains are everywhere on Earth. Why they showed up all at once, we'll never know. What we need is a hero. Hopefully one that doesn't wear their underwear on the outside. Time to step up, scientists! Down in the lab, they're already busy selecting the best bits of DNA nature has to offer. The plan? Take the best bits from different animals and mix it all into the ultimate all-natural superhero serum. Superheroes are fast, very fast. Nature's hero needs quick reflexes, and none compare to the long-legged fly. When startled, this fly has a response time of less than 5 milliseconds. If you tried to photograph this little guy, it would come out blurry 9 times out of 10. Hey, must be camera shy. But being able to dodge out of a photo might not be the exact skill our hero needs. How about some DNA from one of the smartest invertebrates? I'm talking about lightning-fast reflexes and amazing reaction skills. Octopuses are one of nature's greatest escape artists. They're even smarter than some humans. Hmm, Maybe a lot of humans. Each octopus has three hearts and nine brains. Oh, and it hates wearing a suit to work. Every arm, they're actually not tentacles, has a brain of its own, with a central donut-looking brain controlling the body as a whole. That means each arm can move around like its own person. It can react faster than a pro baseball player, even with eight gloves. But that's not all the octopus can give our hero. They, along with cuttlefish, have sweet camouflage skills. Their skin can match the color, texture, and pattern of their background. Hide and seek champions, members of that family. So basically squid, cuttlefish, snails, slugs, and the super genius octopus are actually colorblind. Scientists are as confused as you are. What makes these creatures unique is that they have light-sensing cells all over their skin, not just in their eyes. Imagine being able to see with your entire body. 360 vision, not bad for a superhero. Super strength is the next challenge, and the dung beetle's ready to step up. It can pull over a thousand times its own weight, 
so relative to body weight, it's the strongest animal out there. That's like you hauling around 13 elephants, or 35,000 chihuahuas. Hey, where'd all those dogs even come from? The dung beetle makes it look easy. Plus, it moves objects around by doing a handstand. Our hero definitely needs that. Time for protection. If you're expecting nature to lend us pangolin or armadillo skin DNA, you'd be way off. Nature's hero needs to be agile, too. The best bet is to mix in some camel skin DNA. It's a desert animal, so it makes sense that its skin is ridiculously tough. It can withstand the burning hot desert sand and the blazing hot sun. At least, scientists didn't choose whale skin, even though it's the toughest by far. Having skin over a foot thick might give a superhero great protection, but getting through a door would be a real problem. There's two main things that life needs in order to survive. Oxygen and water. Our hero shouldn't have to worry about that kind of stuff, especially if villains are around. Scientists decide to mix in a little Bornean flathead frog and thorny devil lizard DNA. That way our hero won't ever have to stop by the convenience store for some bottled water. The flat-headed frog doesn't need lungs. Its body absorbs oxygen through its skin. Being so flat gives it a huge surface area. It isn't exactly the most efficient way to get oxygen, so it's a good thing the frog doesn't need to move around too much. The thorny lizard can give our hero protection, but it's also got a clever water transportation technique. It sucks up water through its feet, so it never needs to stop for a drink. Just like a sponge, the water defies gravity and gets sucked upwards. So, nature's hero just needs to step on something wet instead of carrying a bottle around. Being a superhero is hard work and takes time. We don't need our hero stopping for a taco every couple of hours instead of saving the world. The green sea slug drifts around shallow waters, trying to find itself some delicious algae. Once it's had its fill, it's done. For months, or even forever. It's one of the only animals on Earth that can photosynthesize. That thing that plants do to get energy? It's basically its very own solar battery. It doesn't need to stop and eat all the time like us, which also saves a whole bunch of bathroom time. No more bathroom breaks for the new breed of nature's heroes. Pop some of that DNA in the mix for sure. All superheroes have some sort of super speed. Nature's hero needs just that. Time to talk flying speed. The peregrine falcon can easily reach speeds of up to 55 miles per hour flapping their wings. Not exactly lightning fast, but their true speed lies in their dive. The falcon spots its target at a distance, does some quick calculation, and drops it over 200 miles per hour. With pinpoint accuracy, these birds have evolved their bodies to be totally aerodynamic. When they dive, they're still able to breathe through their nose and see their dinner. They've got a rod and fin in each nostril to slow the airflow. Their eyes have special shields that block out any dust. And bam! Dinner is served! Now, diving that fast is great, but nature's hero needs to fly straight as well. We're going to need to add in some great maneuverability. That calls for a very special flyer, but it isn't a bird. The Brazilian free-tailed bat hardly weighs anything, but that doesn't stop it from being the most agile flying creature. Reaching speeds of up to 100 miles per hour in horizontal flight, this little mammal is nature's acrobat of the sky. Definitely gonna need some of that. Lightweight and agile, the perfect combination for nature's hero. Plus, a bat's biosonar vision might come in handy for some late-night crime solving. We have speed and strength. What a combo! But what a real hero needs is a bit of wham power. Nature's hero is going to need the power of the mantis shrimp. It has a punch force of 340 pounds. It's like having a panda fall on you. It has a jab speed of 50 miles per hour underwater which is so fast, it actually makes a shockwave. If the fist doesn't get you, the shockwave will. Its swing is so powerful and fast, it can actually boil water. Nature's hero is also going to need a big dose of the fastest jaw in the world. The trap jaw ant can close its jaws at an amazing 140 miles per hour. 
that's 2,000 times faster than you can blink and faster than I can read this. This bite isn't only for protection, they also use it to make a stylish gadget, its very own ejector seat. When it bites the ground at warp speed, it can launch 1.5 feet into the air. Now, that doesn't sound very high, but when they do it as a group, ant popcorn everywhere! Scale that up to human size, and nature's hero would have a serious vertical leap. Nature's got our hero set for survival, flight, speed, camouflage, never needing to use a public toilet, jumping with its mouth, drinking water out of a puddle. Hmm, what other powers would nature's hero need? What about durability? To give our hero the best chance of survival, we need to mix in a big spoonful of tardigrade DNA. This tiny thing only lives about two years when not exposed to extreme conditions. Not exactly a world record. So what makes it so special? This little creature has been found all over the planet in some seriously extreme locations. Antarctica, the Sahara Desert, even on Mount Everest. It can even survive being in space, with no spacesuit. Astronauts put them outside their space station for 10 days. No water, no oxygen, no food. How did they survive? Well, they can turn on hibernation at will. So when the going gets tough, they just slow their body functions way down. Until someone's kind enough to let them back in the space station. A little tardigrade DNA and nature's hero would be able to survive anything. Ah, the perfect superhero DNA syrup. Hopefully this recipe doesn't get into the wrong hands. <laughs>
so you're too slow. How about calling in some backup? Meet the tiger beetle. Speed, 8 feet per second. It can't fly, but that doesn't matter. This beetle runs so fast, it loses the ability to see while it's moving. It aims itself at a target and then runs. It's not a ninja like the fly, and it can't change directions mid-sprint. It has to stop before each run. You walk at around 4.5 feet per second, so the beetle goes like twice your speed. But for its size, it's incredibly fast. It runs 125 lengths of its body in one second. Now, say you're 6 feet tall. You have to run 750 feet in one second. As long as it's on the same surface as that pesky fly, the fly doesn't stand a chance. Or maybe it's time to call in air support. The dragonfly is the fastest flying insect in the world. This little creature can reach 35 miles per hour. That's faster than you riding your bike down a steep hill. The dragonfly's wings also allow it to fly back, right, left, up and down, just like a helicopter. Doesn't matter how fast the fly moves, it's pretty much game over. Flies, dragonflies, and tiger beetles are fast because they don't want to spend a lot of extra time out in the open. There are a lot of hungry creatures around. But there's one insect that runs fast because if it stopped, ouch! To meet a speedy silver ant, you need to go to the Sahara Desert. The sand here is so hot, you could fry an egg on it. Mmm, sandy. That's why the silver ant speeds at around 2.5 feet per second. It doesn't want to burn its feet. It also has triangle-shaped hair that reflects heat, helping the ant escape the scorching sun. If that ant were human-sized, it could run at 400 miles per hour, faster than the fastest car in the world. There's another ant that holds a speed record. The Dracula ant can't run as fast as the silver ant, but it has the fastest mouth in the world, um, other than me. It can open and close its jaws 5,000 times, all in the blink of an eye. Literally. How about another fast one, this time a bit closer to home, or in it? The American cockroach can hide in the walls, behind the stove, pretty much anywhere. It's almost impossible to catch. It can run 5 feet per second. That's because of its six legs. Each one has three knees. Its legs are covered with small hairs that sense any change in the air. That's why it reacts so fast when you walk into the kitchen and turn the light on. And the world record for fastest creature on land is the size of a sesame seed. It's a type of mite, and it can move at 322 body lengths per second. If you zap the mite to turn it to human size, it could go almost two times faster than the speed of sound. The mite can even change direction while moving. That makes it the fastest, most elusive creature on the planet. But let's find some animals that actually make us feel good about ourselves. The garden snail. It belongs to the mollusk family, and it likes to take its sweet time. If you were moving at snail speed, you'd take two steps every two hours. But snails don't care. They've been around for hundreds of millions of years. Snails use their shell for protection, but they have other tricks too. Some snails give off a nasty smell so that no one bothers them. <laughs> if it gets too hot and dry, snails hide in their shells and seal themselves in using that cool slime they make. That slime also helps them climb up trees. Sloths are the slowest mammals on the planet. Thanks to their slow metabolism, food can take up to 16 days to get digested. Wouldn't be that hard to catch up to one of them. But their slowness actually helps them. You know how in the movies they say, stop, don't make any sudden movements? Well, a sloth has that part down cold. Other animals simply don't notice them up there among the leaves. Manatees are one of the slowest sea creatures, but they're not too worried about anyone messing with them, except for humans in motorboats. They are huge, and they have thick, thick skin. It's like a sea tank, but way cuter. Another slow swimmer is the Greenland shark. It swims at less than 1 mile per hour. Like the manatee, it's large and in charge. No one's likely to challenge it face to face. But this all leads to the most hilarious snacking technique ever. The Greenland shark is basically slower than every single fish in the water. The only chance it has is to wait for some of those fish to fall asleep. Then it's snack time. 
The cool thing is that their easygoing lifestyle actually prolongs their life. The average lifespan of a Greenland shark is 300 to 500 years. They live in the North Atlantic and Arctic oceans. Imagine you're on a cruise and you see one of these slow-motion giants. It might be 400 years older than you. So, it's a hot summer day, you're outdoors enjoying the weather. You want to lie on the cool grass somewhere in the shade just to relax, but ew, looks like someone spat there, but it's actually a spittlebug's house. These guys sip a lot of watery sap from the plants, and when they process it, it forms a lot of bubbles, not less than 150 times their body mass daily. All these bubbles form a cocoon where young insects can grow safely. No bird or animal wants to eat this cocoon because it tastes bitter, as if you licked a Nintendo cartridge. Not so fast, cheetah! Apparently, Dracula ant is the world's fastest animal, and the vampires in the ant world. They definitely win any burger-eating contest, since they're able to snap their jaws 5,000 times faster than your eye can blink. To understand how fast the Dracula ant is, you gotta make a video of his jaws chomping at 480,000 frames per second. At this speed, you'll see the ant slowly moving its mandibles. They don't run, but their mouths are rapid, and they move those jaws so fast, they even bend while snapping together. Now, people can do that too, snapping our fingers so that they bend. The darkest animal out there is the IM-70 chicken. Not only these guys have black feathers, eyes, and claws, they also have black bones. The color is bluish black, and it is deep. If you ever try those chicken wings, they'll look as if someone had marinated them in blackberry juice or squid ink. They say Marco Polo was the first to have discovered these odd or charming roosters. Back in 1298, the explorer wrote about a breed of chickens that were as black as cats and laid the best eggs. This freshwater fish has been around since the beginning of the 20th century and probably remembers good old times with black and white and even silent movies. One big mouth buffalo made it till 112 years old. Still, the world's oldest creatures live in the sea. There are deep sea sponges that are 11,000 years old and they're safe and sound. This fish has incredible gills, which lets it hold its breath for over 4 minutes. Meet the coffin fish, a weird-looking but tough animal. They're also famous as sea toads. They actually look much more like toads, not classic fish with fins and scales. They can also inflate because of the seawater they gulp, so they expand just like a balloon. In fact, this superability lets this fish hold its breath for several minutes because they actually get the oxygen from the water they keep inside. But the absolute champion is the human. The world's champion can survive holding the breath for over 20 minutes. There are some animals that make their own clothes. Sponge crabs make a sort of hat from sponges to protect them from underwater bad guys. To figure out how the crabs decided on their outfit, researchers gave them some foam sponges that were different in sizes. The bigger the crab is, the bigger the sponge it chooses. They use various techniques to get this perfect shape, starting from cutting out a small hole for the head, and then they see if the size fits them. If they're good to go, they continue to cut and dig into that sponge until it becomes a perfect hat. Recently, researchers have spotted a moth that would drink birds' tears while they sleep. So far, there were only three registered cases of animals feeding on other animals' tears. These were some Amazon butterflies, solitary bees, and moths. Their regular diet mostly includes nectar, but it does lack essential salts that aren't that easy to find elsewhere. Not only do they drink birds' tears, they also drink turtles' tears, crocodiles' tears, and those of many mammals found in the Amazon jungle. Really? Crocodile tears? Some sea dwellers can emit red light. For example, the stoplight loose jaw fish uses it to catch dinner. Shrimps don't see the red light, so the loose jaw fish can spot any red shrimp emitting pulses of red light and catches it without scaring the dinner away. Mammals can glow too. A flying squirrel glows under UV light, emitting pink light. It happens because they're able to absorb light and emit it back in another wavelength. 
The platypus may not have the largest cheek pouches, but they're definitely the weirdest. They keep gravel inside those pouches to help mash the food they normally eat. Worms, shellfish, snails. These guys are toothless, so gravel comes in handy when it comes to chewing the food. It works just like a blender. Ooh, makes you wonder what they use for the mouthwash, huh? Now, if humans had the same incredible cheeks just like chipmunks have, we'd be able to transport our groceries right in our mouths. In fact, chipmunks can transport something as large as themselves in their oversized mouth luggage sections. Hamsters have the same superpower, too, and can even carry their young in the mouth in case of the need to run away. A baby carrot, which seems tiny for a human but significantly large for a hamster, can disappear without a trace in between those huge cheeks. The Mariana snailfish, which logically lives in the Mariana Trench, is relatively small. It's as large as two medium candy bars. Despite the size, they can easily withstand the pressure that equals 1,600 elephants standing on it. This fish has a unique body structure. For example, it has some gaps in the skull. If their skull was uniform and had no holes, it would never withstand the pressure in the depths of the Mariana Trench. Plus, their cartilage skeleton is soft and flexible. They also have no actual eyes, but they really don't need them since they live in complete darkness in the world's deepest trench. Hey, meet the Pinocchio frog. Not hard to guess, their nose can grow in size in the blink of an eye in various situations. Whenever they feel danger coming, it gets larger. When these frogs are calm and feel safe, it goes back to normal. It may also elongate when they want to attract mates, and probably when they croak a lot. <laughs> Just kidding. Do you enjoy it when it rains? You probably grab a cup of hot chocolate, cover yourself up with a blanket, and sit on the windowsill, looking at the drops dripping down the window. If you like it, you're definitely not a Myanmar snub-nosed monkey that's been recently discovered, guess where, in Myanmar. Their nostrils are so upturned and exposed to the outer world that they sneeze every time it rains. But if you were in a choir, you have something in common. Snub-nosed monkeys like singing together. Amazon Pink River Dolphins aren't born pink. Their young are always gray, but the older they get, the pinker they turn. It's like people having wrinkles when they age, and these guys simply get a different color. Hey, I like to get a little pink instead of those smile lines. You'd certainly love to be a termite because of their crazy sleep schedule. They actually never sleep, and the only thing they do is nibble on the wooden pegs they see around them. Well, if you're afraid of gaining weight because of a cellulose-rich diet, you could probably turn into a snail. They get a power nap for some hours and then can run without sleep for as long as 30 hours in a row. No fish can survive for any significant period of time without water, except this one, the African lungfish. When they feel something's wrong, they start secreting a mucus cocoon and go underground, give or take 9 inches under the soil. They have a built-in tube to breathe. Mountain stoneweeders, native to New Zealand, aren't afraid of drastic temperature changes. Their blood contains a special protein that doesn't let their blood crystallize in case of extreme temperatures. They tolerate any cold better than polar bears and even penguins, who live in the officially world's coldest place, Antarctica. Ring-tailed lemurs have one of the craziest ways of conflict resolution. They have stink fights. Taking into account the average number of lemurs in a group, about 20 or 30 animals, you'll see there's a lot of competition. Their scent glands are on their wrists and shoulders. Those on the wrists are harmless. The odor they produce is quite volatile. Those on the shoulders are nasty and produce brown, funky-smelling paste that would outlast any perfume. So back off! That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want 